Our leaders from all over the world have been getting on airplanes to fly into Dubai for the climate talks. To make this mode of transport greener in future, flight ticket prices are expected to halve to have, pardon me, to increase as much as 22% by 2050. Hotelli Edwards explains. Here's a look at how much the climate change bill will be for the aviation sector. Well, planes fly in minus 56 degrees Celsius, but on the ground, jet fuel has a freezing point of minus 40 degrees Celsius. It's why flights get cancelled when the mercury dips. Each year, this affects about 60,000 flights, costing airlines and airports a whopping 3 billion US dollars. And the same happens when it gets too hot. Planes get 1% less lift with every 3 degrees Celsius of temperature rise. So in the case of extreme heat, about 40 degrees Celsius, airlines have to wind up offloading passengers, their bags or cargo just to lighten the load of the aircraft. If not, passengers risk getting trapped for hours on runways inside roasting aircraft. Now, even when the flight is airborne, an unknown, unseen risk remains. Clear air turbulence, more commonly known as CAT, a sudden severe turbulence that happens when the skies are clear. Well, that's when you see your seatbelt sign turn back on and air crew are asked to return to their positions. CAT is caused by patches of air swirling within the world's jet streams, strong air currents that circle the globe from west to east. It's invisible to radar, so pilots don't even know it's there until the plane goes through it. This phenomenon was 55% more frequent in 2020 than 1979, and studies say it's going to go up further because of changes in wind speed due to warmer air. Currently, you typically might experience 10 minutes of turbulence on an eight-hour-long transatlantic flight. But in a few decades, this is going to triple to 30 minutes, and the turbulence you go through is going to get stronger. CAT costs the aviation industry about 200 million US dollars annually in the United States alone, as more airframe maintenance is needed with more wear and tear. But even if you've successfully kept your seatbelt fastened at all times, landing safely can be tricky. The biggest factor in delays to flight landing in this region is the high rainfall, especially during monsoon seasons. In fact, rainfall in Singapore has increased by about 70 millimeters a decade since 1980. The Centre for Climate Research adds that the country could experience more intense and frequent heavy rainfall events, and mean sea levels could rise up by one metre by 2100. All these risks that cause flight cancellations and delays could also ultimately threaten Singapore's position as an air hub. Well, let's get into this topic with our experts, both of whom are on Zoom right now. Associate Professor Lee Po Seng is Executive Director of the Energy Studies Institute at NUS. Aviation expert Shantanu Ganga Gaitker is senior consultant at Frost and Sullivan. That's a growth advisory firm. Mr. Shantanu joins us from Kuala Lumpur. Let's start with you, Mr. Shantanu. Uh, are aviation firms in Singapore and the region pricing in the cost of climate change in terms of their op operations adequately? And should they be even doing so? Firms are exploring opportunities. They are trying to understand what is this model to adopt. Because whenever there is a change in terms of this change, we are talking about impact of climate change, there will be uh, some cost to it. But it's important how to manage that cost because all of it cannot be passed on to the passengers or the customers. So how can we better manage in terms of evaluating better business models, better strategies, partnerships with different stakeholders in the industry is what they are trying to explore. Because uh, if at all you add too much of the cost to uh, the end customer, it becomes a, a problem in terms of competition. Mr. Shantanu, the climate impact is clearly there on air travel. We heard earlier in uh, that piece about cancelled flights due to weather, whether it's because of the heat or, or cold, including clear air turbulence. But Singapore wants to continue this push as an aviation hub regionally. When you take into account all of those climate impacts, what could this mean for passengers and airlines as well, flying in and out and for connectivity in this region? 
extreme weather definitely has a potential to uh, disrupt flights, delay, divert, or even cancel. And uh, that is something to be taken very seriously. But uh, there are certain new technologies that are being developed uh, in terms of advanced air traffic management systems that can better help uh, aircrafts and as well as airports in terms of predict this uh, uh, scenarios. So in a way to manage it, of course, we can't uh, avoid it, but managing it in terms of uh, the time of departure, arrival, or the flight paths of arrival and departure could be something that can be looked for while addressing these uh, changes that climate change is impacting. Uh, Professor Lee, let's bring you into the conversation. Uh, earlier we heard about uh, air turbulence getting more frequent now compared to 1979 and will mm. likely get even more frequent due to warmer air, meaning mm. changes to wind speeds. Now, there will be greater, one would imagine, wear and tear on airlines and therefore possibly that cost being passed mm. on to passengers. Is there any way for planes, operators to come up with new techniques, new flying techniques, new kinds of engines mm. or plane bodies that mm. might preempt this mm. kind of damage? In addressing air turbulence, a major concern for airlines today, we are seeing significant advancement. Key among this is the use of systems like total turbulence system. This technology allows pilots with real-time information about the turbulence, enabling them to make quicker, more informed decisions during flights. Pilots are also leveraging altitude adjustment more the frequently to avoid turbulence areas, a simple yet effective strategy. On the design front, aircraft are being reimagined to better endure turbulence. These changes aim to enhance passenger safety and reduce the frequency and cost of aircraft maintenance. Professor Lee, there are two main manufacturers of these uh, long distance planes and, and even for short distance, Boeing and Airbus, I mean, uh, it, depending on, on where you buy your planes from, mm. you're kind of dependent as a country on those two mm. makers. But what are perhaps one or two ways that science or design can actually help airlines mitigate against climate change, especially for a country like Singapore? We don't mm. manufacture those planes. We have mm. to maintain them. Mm -hmm. So in the fight against climate change, the aviation industry is exploring innovative solutions. So electric and hydrogen powered aircraft like the Airbus Zero E project are promising developments for reducing flight emissions. However, the most immediate and impactful change comes from sustainable aviation fuels, SEF. These new fuels can drastically reduce greenhouse gas emission and are compatible with current aircraft models. Alongside fewer innovations, we must also focus on improving aircraft infrastructure. So this includes implementing flood prevention measures, a critical needs for areas like Singapore that are vulnerable to rising sea levels. All right, Mr. Shantanu, let's return to a point you made earlier, which is you did not think it would be a good idea for all higher costs to be bad to be borne by passengers because that might reduce competition. But uh, it could be that with all this building up, consumers might end up paying for those costs. They might decide to pay. They might decide not to pay. Uh, is that the kind of consequence we want to see? Fewer flights because they cannot afford or consumers coughing up and paying anyway? There will definitely be have some costs that passengers will have to pay. Uh, the moment it becomes a mandate uh, where airlines will have to use, let's say, a certain percentage of sustainable aviation fuel, which is currently about two to four times more expensive than the current conventional jet even fuel. So the moment such mandate comes into place, uh, there is no option, but some amount of that increase in price of uh, tickets will be seen. And that's where if passengers have to fly, they will have to pay up that extra, so they may uh, have let's they may reduce their travel overall in a year, but uh, that's what they, the price of the tickets have to be uh, paid up by the passengers in a way. Of course, there are certain uh, strategic agreements that airlines are trying to have with uh, staff suppliers and producers where that this impact can be minimized to the passengers. A quick final question for you, Professor Lee. What do you think of the potential of sustainable aviation fuels in, the, in, the, in this industry in terms of costs? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the transition to the SEF does involve a higher in the initial cost. 
However, this cost needs to be weighed against the long-term benefits of environmental sustainability. As production technology advances and scales up, the cost of self are expected to decline, making them more economically viable. The future success of SEF depends on the collective efforts of the aviation industry. This will include collaboration among airlines, aircraft manufacturers, fuel producers, and regulators. Together, they need to work on increasing both the supply of a demand for SEF, aligning the industry economic goals with environmental responsibilities. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your insights this evening. Associate Professor Lee Po Seng from the Energy Studies Institute at NUS and from Kuala Lumpur aviation expert Shantanu Gangagetkar, senior consultant at Frost & Sullivan. Thank you.